Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 for part 2 of this week's update. And this week is going to be a little bit weird compared to others because we've had two streams this week and that means I'm going to be talking for a bit longer, making a few more videos, that sort of thing. The big news from this week is that Mark has now finished doing um, a bit of Biological Science 4. So we've got the Biological Force catalogues being made here and as usual they're being made from an input of four different types of cards and he's got a decent flow of the cards coming in here so it's on a bit better than when I was showing you the um, the Astro 4 where it was just well yes there are some cards coming in but they're not running quite as nicely as I'd like. Mark has actually put the right number of machines in here so this is working quite nicely. Down here we've got one of the comparative genetics I think it is where it's bringing in uh, tier 1 and tier 3 bio samples and then investigating them to make data. Um, down here it's doing good, oh it's mix, mix, mixing the tier 3 samples with uh, vitalic acid to get some, uh, what, 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 what does it even call this, decompression resistance data. So I'm not quite sure how the vitalic acid is, is sorry, the vitalic epoxy, that makes more sense. It's sticking it together and then seeing, seeing if it can resist being decompressed. Lovely. <laughs> and the same sort of things further down where we've got... Um, Neural, anom neural anomaly data, that's hard to say, uh, where you combine it with a pro with a pro you, know, you put a processing unit and advanced neural gel together and you have a good think about it and then there's a fairly high chance it'll spit back some of the stuff you've just used. And so then you need to you need to worry about pumping it back in again. And so uh, he's used a standard sort of thing here where you use um, a loader to prioritise the input again because they, they, they load more freely than uh, than inserters do, so to make sure that gets through. And then presumably over here he's just yeah, he's keeping this, 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 this pipe not too full, and that means there's plenty of room for this neural gel to come back out into here. <clears throat> Presumably, if we follow this pipe back up here, there'll be a system up here that will... Okay, no, there isn't. I was, I was assuming that this would have a, a pump in it somewhere that ensures that we don't get too much into this pipe. So there's always... Oh, oh here we go. Yes, we do, in fact, have that. Uh, so there's a storage tank over here that can go up to 50,000, and this will run whenever there's less than 5,000 in there. So we're making sure there's always a little bit available to keep these uh, to keep these machines happy, but also plenty of room for it to flow back out of the other side of the machines and go into the storage tanks over here. So excellent. That's exact, exactly as I would expect. He did comment that he's put in the neural gel, advanced neural gel production up here at the top, which is a little bit unusual. He would have put it in at the bottom, but he was building it in real life, as in in, 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 in here, if alive, rather than in the blueprint editor, so he ended up putting it at the top. But, you know, it's a fluid, so it doesn't matter, and things can flow the wrong way along the bus. That's absolutely fine. So that means all of these are now pouring down, well, trickling down this belt over here, where they're added into all of the other uh, cat catalogues that are being passed through in order to load up the train. And so in a little while, we will have a full train over here. Then, as, as usual, the train will then come over this way to, to unload all of the catalogues over here. They can then be passed along here, and they, they were being, but we seem to run out again. So I'm just going to give the train a poke so that it comes over... Um, anyway, even though it's not full. And so, yes, the train arrives over here with all the catalogues. They get unloaded exactly as you'd expect, as do some of the other ones, because we've used a few of them. And they trundle through here, where they will eventually get put into the into the processing system over here. Now, we're still doing Tier 3 um, in Insight production, because we don't want to go... We don't want to um, uh, stress the, the rather still currently limited production of Tier 4 catalogues. But once we've done that, then we can upgrade. Then, over here, we are making the uh, Tier 4 catalogs. Now, these are a bit of a challenge, because they're a bit different to all the rest of them. Every other system we've, we've done, so this this one down here, for example, the Tier 4 takes in, it's, it's the same as the, all the other recipes, except with a different intermediate and pulling in the Tier 3 packs. Uh, biological has to be a bit different. So, up here, we, you can, you, as we see, we've got uh, we've got the sort of, we've got the standard, we've got the Tier 3 being brought in, and the Insight, and the catalog, and the significant data, and the, the Tier 4 um, vi Vitamelange what name. But also, we need Corefrac, Vitamelange core fragments, and those are being brought over from Big Ridge, as you can see by the fact that we've got some of them in here. But the big problem with this is I didn't look at all of the recipes before I started putting the science areas together. So I built them all to have um, have these four inputs like this, one output up at the top, and then pass things through and sort it out and all, all this sort of stuff. Um, and that meant that there wasn't actually room to put in both the Vitalic Epoxy and the uh, and the core chunks on, onto the belt here. And so Mark has come up with a rather clever sushi belt system using uh, counting systems, I believe. So he's, 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 got, he's got it linked up to the inserters down here that are pulsing. Every time they, they pass something through, they'll read the hand contents, they'll pulse through, and they will tell the, the system up here what's been passed, what, what's, what's been um, taken off the, off the bus there. We've got memory cells up here that are presumably remembering what has gone through 
uh, and having, and we've got a, uh, ooh, how, how exactly has he set all this up? I, I, I honestly don't know. Okay, I have looked at it and I now understand. So we've got two belts feeding in here with the core fragments and the vitalic epoxy. And then we're watching down here on these ones, to, uh, uh, sorry, these ones, and outputting if if we see that there's less than 10 uh, vitamelange core fragments on, on, the, on the belt. And the way we know what's on the belt is because when anything goes through here, it gets pulsed, pulsed uh, and added onto this, 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 uh, combina this arithmetic combinator over here that is basically passing the input straight through. So it's just remembering the number that's being held. It's a memory cell. Then down here, we have uh, these inserters are, pass are, are triggering and, and sending a signal through whenever they take anything off the belt. That's being passed up here through this um, arithmetic combinator, which is subtracting one from it and then passing it onto this signal as well. So every time, every time this puts something onto, this, onto the, uh, the belt, it adds one to the signal. And every time this takes something off the belt, it subtracts one from the signal. And that means that we can watch these for the, the amount we want to have on the, on the belt and it'll pass it through whenever some gets taken. And of course, that's not happening at the moment because these machines are not running because they don't have enough bio three packs because they don't have enough uh, vitalic reagent. So yeah, okay, there are still there are still some problems here. It seems with the with all the uh, the stuff being fed through, we don't have quite enough of the. Um, Tier three Vita product in order to keep it running, but we've seen it running. We've made we've made a number of the uh, of the tier four packs. It is it is basically okay. It works very nicely, and this sushi system is very very nice and elegant, and much better than trying to link up every single piece of belt with uh, with cables. I, so yes, I like this system. It works well. It's a little bit complicated, but not unfa unfathomably so. So yeah, generally a, a fan of that, and it keeps all the supplies of everything that's needed down here. And because these um, research servers keep a certain amount of buffer inside them, so there's enough there. To run at least twice, I think, looking at the numbers, um, apart from the bio th three packs which haven't been loaded in. So there's room in here for everything to run twice. It takes quite a long time to run, and so there's plenty of time for whatever whatever we need to get round the round the sushi belt and be fed back in again. So uh, yeah, a nice system there. I I, I like it, um, and convenient, rather conveniently. The way I happened to build this up was very conducive to adding this in like this. So it, yeah, it's working very nicely. In order to get all of the uh, the Vita things over to here, Mark's then got a train over here that's working on a slightly different system from the rest of them because he needs about many different things. I think he said seven. Yes, he needs seven. He needs seven different resources over here, of which he's currently got three. So this is why uh, this is why biologicals are struggling a little bit. But he needs the um, the spice, the extract, the reagent, the epoxy, the core fragments, the scrubbers, and the acid all apparently need to be over here. I'm not sure what the acid's for. That doesn't seem quite so necessary, but that's why that's set to zero, I guess. Uh, no, that's why over here it's not It's not requesting. It's only requesting, requesting five of them, but he's got all of the things on the sushi train anyway. And the theory is that we, he puts, from from this, he puts the signal saying what's needed, which currently is a vitalic reagent, apparently, onto the red signal that's going around the entire base. And that means, in theory, he then can pick that up at the other end, by the Bigridian spaceship, here it comes in here. So currently, it is requesting um, it is requesting Vitalic reagent. There isn't any, so it's not getting any loaded up. It's still going to leave after five seconds of inactivity with nothing on it. So yeah, there are some problems with this system at the moment, mostly due to a lack of supply. Perhaps if there was sufficient supply, then it would actually work. But um, well, there isn't sufficient supply. It's all gummed up with um, core chunks at the moment, and uh, it's all yeah, it's all just a little bit messy over here. So. I think we're going to call this a sort of a still work in progress. This is not quite finished, not quite working as we would like it to. But there's some good theory going on here and it has allowed us to get some of the science made. In fact, yes, looking at his notes, he says he's currently only set it up for the science park, not for the bio area stations. Uh, okay, so it is, yes, it is currently set up for the science park, so it should work, it should work for uh, for bringing it over here where the science was done, where we were looking before. Um, it's just suffering from a lack of supply and a lack of intelligence on the train, I suppose. Uh, so there's some, some some work, further work is needed there. Going even further back up the tree, this is Big Rid, the Vita Melange planet, and Mark has completed this one in inverted commas. I mentioned this a little bit on Friday, but basically he has eliminated all of the biters on it. We've scanned it to make sure it's safe, and it is. And he says he's also now gone out and claimed every single core seam on the planet. So all of the core for, all the core core mines are up running, dragging in along these incredibly long Mark belts, pulling all of the resources into the sort of a 
a central place down here where they are all then getting reprocessed. Uh, he, I believe he says that he doesn't think he's going to get anything like enough um, vitamelange from the uh, from the core fragment processing, which makes it kind of makes sense because that's been the case everywhere else. The um, other planets have not been able to produce enough holmium, ber beryllium, iridium, whatever, without going out and using traditional style mining. So it makes a certain amount of sense that, he, that, that he's not been able to produce enough from there. And I remember from 0.5 that there was significantly more demand for um, for vitamelange than there was for the other resources you produce. So that seems fair enough. Uh, he's added in a belt, that go, presumably this belt that goes up to the uh, up to the space train as well. Yes. Yeah, so so this is capable of loading in the core chunks when we require them. Um, in fact, all the way across here, you can see we've got all the different biological things coming through. So for some reason, the reagents are not being passed through to the train and to the spaceship. So I think there's some I think some further work is needed on requests to get all of these sort of things running and in the right places. In fact, at the moment, the only thing that's being loaded into the uh, into the spaceship train is the uh, is the byproducts, all of these ores that are coming from the core mining. Uh, we're not actually feeding in any of the biologicals. So what what are you? What's this one that these, is that would actually be running? Okay, so we are looking currently. We're looking for vitalic epoxy, uh, the reagent. I'm not sure why that's not being fed through, but it isn't. But the other thing that, we, that uh, Mark has mentioned is that he's built up some um, some epoxy production. So let's go and find find that. That's over here. Apparently, that is a single machine, which is a which I find quite entertaining because I mean it's full of productivity modules and has a massive beacon next to it. So yeah, it'll run incredibly quickly when it runs, but it's run out of vitalic acid. So yeah, in theory, this is going to be making lots and lots of the epoxy, but the vitalic acid production over here has stalled. Let's have a quick look and see why. Because there's insufficient nitric acid, and there is insufficient nitric acid because there's insufficient ammonia, there's insufficient ammonia because there's insufficient hydrogen, and there's insufficient hydrogen because there's insufficient water? What? Oh right, yes, he did mention it actually in, in an earlier stream that he that, that a water pipe had been cut off somewhere. So yeah, once that gets fixed, we should get the vitalic. Uh, we should get the, um, the we should we should get the uh, electrolysis happening. So we'll get the ammonia. So we'll get the nitric acid. So we'll get the vitalic acid. So we'll get the uh, the epoxy, and so everything will then start to run again properly. Hopefully, in the meantime, I guess he's just filling up buffers of things like this. Uh, um, that's the extract, isn't it? Yes, the vitalic extract. So, yeah, okay, it's the, that water pipe needs fixing, but once that's done, everything will, should hopefully start running again. I'm still a little bit concerned about the lack of vitalic reagent being fed through here, given that there's such a shortage of it, but maybe there's already lots in space, so it's been uh, it's already been taken up there. I'm not quite sure. Mike has been busy with ironing, as in going out and decommissioning some old iron mines that have completely fit, completely run out. And we looked at this a bit in the uh, in the last couple of streams and videos and things. I was going, well, there don't seem to there doesn't seem to really be all that much um, iron available on Norvis. We do have a well, there's, okay, there's a patch there. But it's, it's about two million. That's not not too bad. We do have an iron mine over here, but it's only got half a million left in it. And uh, whilst okay, it, its output is full. There is a train sitting here, not going anywhere. So we do we are currently actually okay. K for, um, for for, for uh, iron ore, but having looked at the um, the graph in the in, in the previous episode, you, you saw there was a distinct shortage of iron ore on it, as shown by these uh, only five yellow blobs on here, and that was looked a lot worse before. That's mostly because the iron mines aren't hooked up. However. We are also aware that we, there isn't an enormous amount more iron on this planet, so we've dispatched Mike off to Oliran, because Oliran is an iron primary. So if we have a look here, you can see there's an iron logo there, and it has lots and lots of iron and a and some other things as well, most of which we, we, we basically don't care about. So the mission we gave uh, Mike was to come out to Oliran and then put down maybe four, five, six, seven core miners, pull out all of the st all the core fragments from those like this, crush them down into well, we'll get out um, core, we'll get out iron, core chunks, and stone. The iron and the, the stone can then be passed down the belt here into this broken warehouse. Uh, a, a meteor came in and hit it because he hasn't put the defences up properly. <laughs> or rather he has, but they're, they, uh, they ran out of ammunition. Then the vanilla core chunks can be passed around here, crushed again, and that'll get us out the... Um, all the standard metal, uh, all standard metal ore, so even more iron ore plus some copper and stone and rare metals and so on. Uh, all of that can be loaded into the, into the train as as you would expect, and then taken up and, and, and taken away. And so this will produce. I mean, if you look at the amount of iron ore produced over here, we can check check this one for every every you you, you crush. Okay, twenty core fragments. You'll get maybe two core vanilla core fragments out. You'll get 19 iron ore and a stone. So this is going to be absolutely fantastic for generating massive quantities of iron for us. So if we then ship this over to Norvis and then have it made available down on Norvis as a as a 
lower priority than the stuff that comes from the normal core mines, because we, we need to use that up as a priority, but still a higher priority than the actual mines on Norvis, then this should solve all of our iron problems essentially forever. We're going to have loads and loads of it available. It should be really, really easy. Um, and so, yeah, so we, we put this in, I say we, Mike has put this in, and to be honest, I think it's going to work absolutely fine. It, he's, got, he's got productivity modules in there, maybe, maybe a beacon in the middle for speed, we'll, we'll see whether that's actually necessary. We might find that there isn't all that much actually coming out of these mining uh, core miners. Um, but yeah, we, we, we will see. But I think, from previous experience, I believe that this will produce enormous quantities of iron and will mean we, our iron problems are forever solved. And we can repeat this sort of thing on other planets if we need to. So for example, we're, we're, there's an oil planet here, so we can get enormous quantities of oil from there or from there. That one's nearer, so it'd be even easier. Uh, coal as well from Zendia, uh, or um, or Hyperion. Unfortunately, there isn't a copper primary in our system, so we're not going to be able, we can't go out there and, and do this for copper, which is very unfortunate because um, copper tends to be one of the ones you really, really you need massive, massive quantities of. Um, looking down here, we've got another one for here for stone. So if we needed massive quantities of stone, we could go there. Uh, if, but if we want copper, it looks like we're going to have to go a little bit further afield and go out to um, I, oh, Galactic Gravel or Slumberland are our only copper primaries, and those are uh, and those are asteroid fields. So that's 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 not ideal. That's not going to be that's not going to be a fantastic way of getting copper. In, in an emergency, we may well resort to that later on in the game. But for the moment, I think we're just going to try and get it out of the other planets we've got. I was expecting there to be a copper primary in a different in a different star system. Even that wouldn't be ideal, but it would still be possibly better than this sort of thing. But anyway, they, those are, those are certainly possibilities. The interesting thing about uh, Oliran is the terrain on it. This is a this is a, a very watery world. I think Mike's touched down in the middle of it as you as you generally do. Um, but it's just there there are, there are so many cliffs and so much ocean on it that I hope he, let's just say I hope he's taken a lot of landfill and a lot of cliff explosives with him. Uh, we did look at it before he went, so I'm I'm, I'm sure he has. But yes, he's going to need some more asteroid defenses because if we look up in Oliran orbit, yes, he has put the guns in. Uh, but they don't have any ammunition at the moment, so they're not they're not defending very well. But up here, you've got exactly you've got the standard thing. You've seen this a million times before. A train comes up, it unloads all of the the stuff that is needed that is being brought up from the planet. So mostly iron ore from here, which gets dumped into a spaceship that can take it away. And on the uh, and in return, the spaceship brings out any resources that are needed, which is going to just be the stuff to keep the keep the systems running. The um, the the, the uh, cable for the for the space elevator, the ammunition for the meteor defense guns, and then uh, and some batteries to keep the trains running. So there's there's not a lot needed out here because it's a very, very simple system. Pulling iron out of the ground, very straightforward. It doesn't need weird other other ingredients to be brought in, thank goodness. So so the system out here will just work very nicely. It's, it's, it's a very, very simple one. Um, and to be honest, it's nearly done. I think he spent maybe half of the last stream working on it and it's practically finished. That shows how, how, how nice and easy it is. Tristan has been out to Njord, where he has put in the, the final belts for a new, mi a new mine, which I think is probably down... Is it... That, that one was there before, I don't know whether it's that, maybe, yeah, maybe it is this one, because I finished that one off in, the, in, in a video recently. Anyway, he says he's finished putting the last belts for a new mine, which I'm going to choose to believe is that one. So this mine will now be feeding in, yes, there we go, we've got a really nice feed of um, Holmium ore coming in here. So we've got the stuff coming from, that's been brought in by train over here, we've got the stuff coming in from the mine, we're merging the two, there's l absolutely loads of it down here, uh, all being crushed down into the uh, crushed Holmium. A Holmanite even. Uh, that's pouring through here. These belts are all full. This looks amazing. This is so much better than it was before. Now he's got he's got the supply working. This is brilliant. Um, that's then being crushed down, powdered, whatever. I can't remember all the terms for this. We've got a good a good flow of the, the stuff coming out here. It's still not actually it's still not quite there. But there's lots and lots of it coming through. This is certainly much, much better than it was before. But it looks like down here there's a bit of a shortage of some of the other things that need to go in. So is this going to be the is this going to be a, a acid type problem? Uh, oh no, no, it's the uh, it's the anion exchange beads. So yes, these anion exchange beads are being made in a quantity. The quantity is apparently insufficient, but then that's always the way with Factorio. <laughs> so he's churning through lots, lots and lots of the anion exchange beads. They're pouring absolutely pouring down these belts and bit to be uh, to be used for the processing. Um, but it's still not enough, my god. Okay, but we are now making a lot of Holmium. We're making 126 per minute over the last 10 hours. <clears throat> and we've been using 84 per minute over the last hour. Um... I don't know. I don't know how to read these graphs because we've got the we've got the steady input of 206 per minute, which is about uh, about 200 per minute, and an output of 44 per minute. But then there's these spikes. Now I think I think this is I think this means it's okay because we've got this steady usage along the bottom here, uh, and I think if if we'd run out, that would drop to, might drop to zero. Uh, then we've got these spikes, and that's probably when we're refilling with 
cable, uh, space elevator cables or making a huge flood of, of something. So maybe this, so this, or a train takes away a load of holmium cables, something like that. So I think these spikes are signs of it working quite well. Um, and the fact that this number is so much bigger than this number, granted it's only over, only over one hour, but this makes me think that we are prob probably okay on Holmium now. The other way to check is, of course, to look at this graph, uh, which suggests we're actually not quite as okay on Holmium as I thought we were. The not-so-secret third way is to look at this warehouse here, which is actually what the graph does. Uh, and we'll note there's no Holmium in this one, so it's... It's either, it's either insufficient or it just hasn't filled up the buffers yet. Um, I'm optimistic that it might be the latter, but um, we'll have to keep an eye on this over the next few, uh, ex next few episodes. So the previous problem with the, uh, or the problem that Tristan fixed most recently with the, uh, with the, with the Holmanite or Holmium processing was there was ins insufficient hydrogen chloride. So he's put in quite a lot more production. That's all of these machines along here that are still waiting for their modules. Um, and now we were able to sort of pump it through here along this way. There's lots of it going through. And we now have plenty of hydrogen chloride being fed down to the processing system. So that's, that's going really well. Uh, that, looks, that looks great. And he's improved the uh, sand supply to it as well, apparently. With a large quantity of stone that's coming from okay, stone that's coming from the core processing, fine, being turned into sand, um, and a sand belt coming in from over here that is coming from goodness knows where. Oh, there's a cr another crusher over here that's dealing with oh, that's dealing with the stone that's coming in from some other core mining, core processing probably. Um, so there is a lot of stone being fed around on on extremely long belts, but it does seem to be enough sand. It. It's just about, it's only just enough sand. Where you, you can see that, yes, the, these pipes are full. We are making we are making lots of hydrogen chloride. These pipes are empty because it's been pushed out along here. Uh, and, this, and this belt across the top has not filled up with sand. So it is sufficient to keep all of the systems running, which is the important thing. Uh, and I expect that means there's just there's going to be about enough to, that we will gradually fill up all of the buffers, and so the sand probably will be enough. Um, but I wouldn't like to say that for certain until I've actually seen it happen. But... The system is working happily at the moment. Uh, of course, if we get in more uh, more of the uh, anion exchange beads and then everything starts to run faster down here, then that will use up more of the hydrogen chloride and maybe then it won't be okay. Um, but maybe we don't need to just yet. We'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it is what I'm trying to say here. Tristan would also like it to be known that he has also claimed every single core mine on this planet. Did I say that earlier? I can't remember. If I did, if I've said that twice, I do apologise. But yes, he's now claimed every single one. He has also killed every single biter on this planet, but that was less of, the, less of an achievement than when Mark did it, because there weren't any in the first place. So all of them was a total of zero. He's also added in additional dirty water processing, so that's all these machines up here. So this step of the process takes in the, 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 the beads, the holmanite hydrogen chloride, kicks out some of the... Th holmium chloride is the thing we actually want, some bits that get looped back around again, and then dirty holmium water. The dirty holmium water then gets passed out in the pumps up here and is then cleaned over here, and from this we can get out a bit of stone, which is great, we can turn that back into more sand for when we need it later, So and a little bit of crushed holmanite. That holmanite is quite nice and useful um, because we can feed that back into the system. You also need to loop more more anion exchange bead rounds in order to do this, but you know that's just the way these things go. And then it releases some water, which we're all just blowing off into the into the atmosphere, so it's getting nice and humid on this planet. Over on Kothar, well, actually nothing nothing major has happened over here since the improvements I was talking about in on in Friday's video. However, um, Mike did have to go out here in a panic because a load of biters managed to managed to build up a nest rather close to the uh, rather close to, to his to his walls. I, I don't know where it was. There's some damage here. Maybe it was around here. I don't know. Uh, and then had managed, managed to send enough 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 attacks over that they managed to chew through the wall and destroy some turrets. So uh, he went over there um, nice nice and quickly, put up some more lasers, blew up the uh, blew up the biter nests, and now this area is once again safe. So yeah, it's uh, maybe maybe it's down here. No, nope, maybe not. Maybe it's just a little bit of damage. So yes, the planet is now once again safe, but unfortunately it required a little bit of uh, human interaction in order to make it that way. It's, it's because Mike hasn't built a ridiculous uh, logistics bot system to cover the entire universe, that, uh, b which is probably a good thing, because if he had, it would probably take, have even more of an impact on our UPS. So, <laughs> thank you. On Norvis, we've been seeing a terrible shortage of glass, and according to the graph, we do still have a shortage of glass. However, I can promise you that's not actually the case anymore. So previously, we had this system all the way over, over, over here, this one? No. <laughs> Yes, over here, we had the system over here that was bringing in stone from, from mines and from core mining and from all kinds of useful places. Passing it through here, where it was then being crushed down into sand that could then be turned into 
quartz to be turned to silicon and also was to being turned into glass. It looks like we've now turned that off, which is a good, which is a good thing at this point. Um, but this wasn't able to produce it fast enough because, to be honest, I mean, look at look at this system. Yes, it's got it's got good productivity modules in it. It's up at tier three currently, which is you know is is roughly where we want to be. But there's no speed beacons in here. We're still using old furnaces over here. This this system over here is just it's just kind of dated and, and, and not what we want to see at this stage of the game. Um, and also, it just was straight up not fast enough. It wasn't producing the glass at the rate we needed it to. And so, Mark has built up a new area over here, which is um, bringing in stone from uh, from core mining, I assume. Yes, yes. So here... No, it's bringing in the stone from from the train drop-offs here, which is, to be fair, in turn being... So, let's, let's look this through in, 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 in a sensible order. So, over here we have... This is, this is the core processing area, and also the, the junk from space dump area. So, any stone that we get from here, that, that is, this is basically the free stuff that we want to get rid of as a priority. So, the stone from here comes up along here. It'll be split off through these belts here. So, one of them will take it off to the station. The next one takes it off to over, over this way to be fed onto this belt. Anything from the core processing also gets fed onto this belt by priority, and then off to the station as a secondary priority. This is a bit of a... a a little bit of an awkwardness but anyway all of that pours down here and goes into this warehouse from here well we're then passing it over that way to, to the uh, the silicon production that I showed you before and then also down this fairly long belt down here that brings it through and dumps it into this warehouse from here well this one will gradually fill up over time but it's then being passed up into these processing facilities up here where we've now got this is now a, a much higher tier of, of, of everything production so we've got we've got the speed air, wide area speed beacon going on here to make this make all these machines run quickly we've got um, we've got the pulverizers we're still with only the uh, the tier three modules and you can't you can't increase that any further I don't think this is as good as good as it gets but with a speed beacon next to it it goes really quickly. That's passing the uh, the sand up to these machines, which are then, these are the advanced furnaces, so we can put loads of modules in them. They run really quickly, and apparently we're also pumping in pyroflux as well, because I guess we have loads of it, so yeah, it makes sense, we might as well use it. And so these now, we've got a, a more efficient glass production recipe, I guess, uh, which makes, yes, so the 32, let's, in fact, let's have a look in FNEI. So you can make glass, this is the old way we were doing it, so you can turn 16 sand in any of the types of furnace into 8 glass, so it's a 2 to 1 process. Alternatively, you can do the one we've just started doing, which is 32 sand and 10 pyroflux into 24 glass. So that's a 4 to 3 process. So we're getting 50% more glass out for each sand we put in at the cost, at the mere cost of a bit of pyroflux. There is another one as well. Oh, this is, this is a uh, this is a matter of fat handling one. We won't, we won't look at that yet. Uh, this requires the more advanced smelteries, sure, but this does mean we can then produce significantly more glass. And so, yep, yeah, that seems like a good idea, especially as we have loads of vulcanite at the moment. Although that said, making pyroflux also requires sand. So 10 pyroflux would require uh, one sand. So okay, it's, yeah, it's, it's still worth it. So this, this recipe is actually 33 sand and one vulcanite in order to make the 24 glass. So I think it's it's still better because we do have the vulcanite coming in in massive quantities. Uh, and so, yes, that is a, then all this glass gets poured out into this warehouse and everything is then hunky-dory. We have loads and loads of glass available. Um, now, what we should note is that down here, this is th these these pylons are supposed to have a list of everything that's in the, in on the net available on the network on the green on the green cables. So, we should actually be linking this to here and to here here like that. And now, if we go back and look at the graph again, suddenly we have, well, we have 50% uh, of, of the glass is 50% full. And so, since we currently, we consider that that warehouse is is full, I believe. So now we can go in here and we can tweak, we, we could tweak the numbers slightly by saying, actually, we don't want to be dividing the glass by 10k, we want to be dividing by 5k. Um, and then, boom, just like that, this bar is essentially full so yeah the, the you need to get you need to get the numbers right so, so your bars bars are in the right place but if we look over here yeah this this, this warehouse is completely full that's that's good I mean I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm going to be very very happy with that a, a full warehouse is just over three trains worth of the whatever the resource is so I think we're doing pretty well there. I'm um, yeah I'm gonna, gonna, gonna be happy with that quantity as part of this, Tristan also moved the fuel processing up out of the way because a lot of the uh, a lot of the station for this was just sort of taking up this area down here because you know space in Factorio is mostly cheap until you come to rebuild. So he built it in quite a large way, taking and there wasn't really room for all of the all of the glass blowing stuff down here. And so it's now been moved up here to 
tweak to tweak it out of the way slightly, um, and and actually with a little with a slightly more careful design, it has fitted in very very neatly. So that's great. This is the this is the fuel that we are still using to power all of our trains because I believe it gives you the same air acceleration as rocket fuel, but you can but you can make it from absolutely anything you want. And at the moment, I suspect we're making it from all the spare wood that's coming in from Big Red as part of the uh, the Vitamalange processing. And so that brings us to the end of the first episode. I hope you've enjoyed this, and it's been uh, suitably interesting, educational, entertaining, and other words beginning with E. Some of those words began with E. Uh, and yes, yeah, so things things are going pretty well. Looking at our graph, things seem to be generally looking fairly optimistic. I'm I'm happy with the way things are going at the moment. So come back tomorrow, or possibly the day after, when I shall be uh, get, get, talking about the, the final things that we were getting up to uh, in, in the last stream. Uh, some quite exciting stuff in there. So that should be um, an in interesting video. And I've uh, and made my head uh, go a bit swimming when I was trying to trying to get all the whole thing up and working. And then come back on Tuesday when I should be streaming XCOM 2: War of the Chosen. Uh, we're doing I think we're doing fairly well at the moment. Although the last mission was a bit of a uh, the last mission didn't go quite so well. We had lots of people injured and we had and, and we actually technically failed the mission because the VIP we were supposed to be rescuing got killed. So it was a bit uh, a little bit unfortunate. Sorry about the spoilers if you haven't watched the mission, but it'll still be exciting to see how that happened. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday for the uh, for the next Factorio stream. We're going to back to uh, one a week now. The the two the having two this week was a um, was a bit of an unusual um, event. It's not going to happen very often because I'm um, because wow, that's a lot of evenings taken up by playing Factorio. Um, but yes, well, that will be happening on Thursday. The videos, I'm going to, my intention is to start releasing those on Saturdays and Mondays, but to spread them out a little bit. We'll see how that goes as I start trying to, uh, as, as, as we get into the new into the new schedule. And I'm also going to keep, keep trying to have other videos coming out on Wednesday. That might be an XCOM video, or it might be an additional Factorio video, or something completely different as well. So, there's always something going on on the channel, so please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of it. And come along to all the streams, see all the videos, subscribe, follow, like, everything else a YouTuber tells you to do. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.